The next example I want to cover is the keying toolset. Now it's important to note that whilst the other examples I've shown you will provide an almost complete result if you plug in the correct inputs at the top, because the process of keying is so reliant on the nature of the footage you're working with, the nodes used in this toolset will no doubt change almost entirely on a shot-to-shot -shot basis. The purpose of this toolset is therefore not to achieve a full final result, but more to explain how you could potentially go about creating a key in a slightly more nuke-based way. So in this video I'm going to run through this keying setup step by step, looking at the processes used not really on a node based level, but for more of a conceptual level. I'm going to start off by taking a look at the inputs here. So at the top left we have our foreground, or our main plate, and in the top right here we have our background, which will merge our foreground elements over. We then come down into this big grey alpha creation section. Because I know that each of the keys inside of Nuke has a different set of strengths, I've chosen to split this key up into three distinct sections, as opposed to trying to approach the entirety of the key with a single node. The benefit of this is that by splitting up into an edges, core and fine detail section, I get to concentrate on just this single aspect of the key. And then once each section is exactly as I want it to be, I can combine the results together before finally using it to composite together my image. So let's take a quick look at that alpha creation section and just see exactly what we're doing to combine those keys together. So let's take a look at the edges and the core sections. The edges section here on the left hand side is using a primat node to concentrate on the very edges of our characters, not worrying at all about their core or the hair detail here on the right hand side. So if we take a look at the resultant alpha mat for that channel, you can see that the hair looks a little bit messy, but the edges look pretty good. The core, conversely, is also using a primat and achieves pretty similar results. However, we're then eroding that down to ensure that this middle section of our characters, the bits that aren't the hair detail and the bits that aren't the edges, are absolutely not transparent. We know these bits aren't see-through, and we want to ensure that that remains the case. Now, to merge both the edges and the core results together, we're using this node, a channel merge. And inside of here, we can choose to merge specific channels from both the A and B pipes together. In this case, we're doing a union of the alpha channels. So let's take a look at, first of all, the edges alpha, then the core alpha, and then finally, the merged result. We then go on and do a very similar thing with the fine detail section. The first thing I'm doing inside of here for my specific shot is to denoise this green screen because it is a very noisy uh, foreground plate that we're dealing with here. I'm then using another keyer, the IBK keyer, which is a combination of two nodes to try and achieve a better result for the hair in this case on this right hand side character. Now if we take a look at the alpha channel for this, you can see that whilst the hair looks a little bit better, there's definitely some work to be done, the core section and also this background section as well looks a lot worse. So the important thing here is that we want to ensure we isolate just the bits that we're interested in from this part of the key when we do the merge with the edges and the core mat. To do that, I'm still using a channel merge node down here on the right hand side, but I've added into the mask pipe this roto shape. If I just bring up the properties for that, you can see that I've rotoed around the hair for this shot, and of course I would have to animate this for the rest of the sequence, but doing so ensures that when I do the channel merge, I only pull in the bits of detail I want from this specific fine detail section of the key. And it's this concept of creating a part of the key, combining it using the channel merge, but ensuring that you're isolating just the bits that you want with roto masks added into the mask channel on the channel merge node that you can use in your shots with this setup. Now the first thing you might do might be to come in and just remove entirely any of the nodes inside of here other than those merge nodes because you might need to add in a lot more detail inside of these backdrops, extra bits of roto, extra denoise nodes to clean up your specific shot in a way that makes sense. So now you know how I'm going about creating my alpha mat, let's take a quick look at these other three sections. Over here in the plate CC section, I'm essentially grading this original plate to try and remove some of that green hue in a way that will make sense when we do our final composite. Down here in the pre-molt section, I'm copying this alpha that we've created up here on the left into this main plate pipe. So you can see inside of here, our alpha is in place. And then I'm doing a pre-molt to remove any of those background pixels from this image. And then finally in my background merge section, I'm merging my A, which is my characters, over my B, which is coming down from my backdrop input to get our final result. 
So that's a quick look at the concepts behind the Keen toolset available now inside of Nuke.